Hey guys, welcome back to the Hands-On Channel. Uh, today we're taking a look at a used door that the wife and I picked up. It's actually an antique door. You can probably see by the, the type of uh, door handle that it takes there. It's an older style. I think they started to go out of fashion in about the 60s or 70s, but anyway, so these doors, when you see this type of a hinge or this type of a uh, handle attachment here, you know that it's an old style door. Well, anyways, we picked up one of these for our bathroom out on the off-grid homestead. But as you can see, you know, there's no door jam around it. We bought the door only. So we got the door, the hinges, the hardware, stuff like that. Everything except the striker plate. I'm going to have to make a striker plate. But uh, I went over to Lowe's and was able to pick up these uh, door trim or door jam pieces so that I can make my own door jam and door frame so that I can essentially turn this into a pre-hung door. Uh, that's what I want to do. So what, you, what you're going to need for this project as far as material wise, you'll need the door, of course, which is here, uh, whatever size you want. And watch out if you're buying these used doors, a lot of them have been cut down on the bottoms and stuff over the years. So you need to take, you know, uh, height measurements before you pick one. We, we went through several of them that were too short for what we were wanting. Uh, but you're going to need the door, uh, the hardware, the hinges, so that you can attach it to the new frame. Uh, I bought these from Lowe's. Uh, they've already got a rabbit notch in them here so that whenever you set the top board down on top of it, it has a nice place to sit and you can put glue in here, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, so you're going to need at least three of these pieces so that you can make the frame. And then this piece here is your door stop. That's going to mount inside here wherever you decide to set your door. And on my case, uh, since this door is swinging into the room, it's going to be basically on the inside, the furthest inside of the frame like that. So the door is going to actually sit in kind of a pocket. You'll reach in, hit the, grab the lever, and turn it in. So the door will usually sit to one side or the other. In my case, it's going to set to the inside. So you're going to just kind of need to know some of that kind of stuff. You're going to need some uh, finishing nails or some way to attach this. I'm going to use a combination of, uh, I've got a finish nailer, an air nailer. I'm going to use that and some glue probably to hold this all together. And the only other thing you'll need material wise, as far as wood material, is down there where my dog's investigating that cricket it just came into the shop. I've just got a scrap board and I'm going to take that and use that for my bottom plate. Uh, to hold the bottom of the door jam together while it's in transport and stuff like that. So this is essentially what you're going to need to get this job going. And we're going to walk over here and I'll show you the tools that we're going to need. All right. Now this may evolve as we go along, but I'm pretty sure this is all I'm going to need. And what we're looking at here is a, some way to cut the wood. I've got my Japanese style saw there. Uh, we'll start from the top and work down. Uh, I'm going to need I'm gonna use some glue, just some traditional indoor work wood glue. Now, if this was an exterior door, you might want to look at some interior exterior glue. But since mine is going to be an inside bathroom door, I'm just going to use interior glue and those screws right down below it. Uh, you're not going to want to use sheetrock screws on something like this. You're going to want to use actual construction screws. Uh, sheetrock screws are not made uh, for a lot of sheer uh, strength, they'll, they'll snap on you. And if you've ever run one in too hard and had it snap on the end of your drill, on the end of your drill bit, you know what I'm talking about. So, uh, anyways, screws, uh, box knife and there, that little small thing in the middle, that's a countersink just so that I can get my screws sitting in there nice and flush. Uh, I like to pre-drill my holes also, so I don't split the wood. You're going to need your drill and a screwdriver bit to run those in. You're going to need a tape measure and you're also going to need a square and a pencil, something to mark with. And so that should do it. And basically I couldn't find a whole lot of information online about this project. So that was one of the reasons why I'm making this video here was I thought, you know, this could, this could help people out that are in my same situation. They've got an old door and they want to turn it into a pre-hung door so that when they install it in their place, it's easy. I'd rather do the work here where I'm on grid and I can do a lot of stuff, although I'm going to use hand tools and stuff like that and cordless tools. It still is easier to do things here because, you know, I have hardware stores close by and uh, power over here on tap if I need it. So 
anyhow guys that's what we're getting ready to start up here uh one thing i saw i was trying to tell you guys about how i had a hard time finding it, much information about this was i finally i finally just googled it so basically what this guy on this website was saying was you need one eighth inch on the sides and one sixteenth inch on the top for your spacing for the door so when you make your trim uh, when you make your jam here, your jam piece, you need to make it an eighth inch wider and a sixteenth inch above the top above the top of the door up there. So basically, you want that to sit a sixteenth below the actual door jam. And what that's for is spacing, so the thing can you know have enough room inside of there to move in and out without rubbing the inside of the door frame. So we're going to see how wide it is at the bottom. And see, it's a 24 inch door, but it's actually measuring 24 and an eighth. Measure again here, make sure we're consistent. Yes, 24 and an eighth. So my overall width for this particular door on my, on my vertical styles as they call them these these jam boards that go in around the door uh, the width of that is going to be 24 and a quarter i'm going to examine these different pieces that i have here and just look for anything like this one i see a knot hole right down there there's a knot right there i didn't get a clean board on that one so i think i'm going to use this one for a top piece so we'll set that aside for a moment. That is actually the one I'm going to cut. Uh, now that we've got it in position, you guys can probably see kind of how this works. So you've got these, these rabbits, they call them right here. It's basically that notch right there in the board. So the other top board is supposed to sit inside of that and then you nail it and screw it together or, or uh, glue it and screw it, which is what I'm going to do. All right, for step one, what I've done here is, and of course, I think it goes without saying, you have to have a nice flat surface so that you can do this job. If you don't have a flat surface to do this on, your results are gonna turn out pretty poor. So I'm using the concrete slab in my shop here, which I know is nice and flat. And I'm gonna take my level before I screw this together and make sure I'm in line this way so that I'm not you know, screwing the board together in a weird way. And I wanna, I wanna square it up also like this the best I can. Although it's gonna have some movement until I get it all attached. But what I did was drilled a couple of, pre-drilled a couple of holes and held all this stuff together the best I can. And I've got the first leg in place. And the reason I'm starting out with the bottom is I just was thinking about it and I think it'll be easier for me to get this all in line and level and keep it all together if I start with this bottom piece. And again, the bottom piece really doesn't matter because I'm leaving it really long. So the next thing I need to do is I need to have 24 and a quarter inches in between this surface and this surface. So I'm going to stand this up like so and kind of repeat the process is I'm gonna measure over and make a mark on this bottom board at 24 and a quarter so stay right there right there okay now I can take my square and make a nice straight reference line to go off of there so measure it again just to make sure we're on got 24 and a quarter plus an RCH. I went just slightly over because I'm not so sure how consistent this door is. It's not a brand new door, so I went one RCH over. I could have went a blonde CH, but I didn't think that was going to be quite enough. So anyways, what we're going to do now, and I almost did it wrong there because I'm talking to you guys, I'm blaming you. So what we're going to do is measure over to that 24 and a quarter. So we need that. That's our face to face measurement. So I need to bring this face up to that edge. 
kind of get it as square as I can here just by eyeballing. I'm going to hold it right there. Take my speed square and stick that in here in the middle. And actually I might be able to, there we go. Okay, I'm liking that. So now what I'm going to do is pre-drill a couple of holes right here in the bottom and shoot a couple screws in. And I'm not gluing this because this board is going to come off when we're ready to install this piece. This is just a, this is just basically framing to help hold it together while I'm in transport. So this is going to be a little tricky. Hold everything right on the line and square. Okay, I like that. Get one screw in. My countersink bit is worn out because I've been using it to drill through uh, James Hardy board siding and that's concrete fiber board. So it wears out all your sharp tools real quick. This kind here, you can actually take over to your you can take the bit out, and since it just has one cutting flute on it or one cutting edge, you can actually sharpen that up with a file, which I've done several times, but it needs it again. So, get our screw ready here. Back to the line. Back to the square. Now, now that I've got that one nice and snug, I should be able to, yes, I can square this off. And it should hold in place. I like that right there. Go ahead and check this side. I've got a little cupping going on on the bottom edge of this thing here. That looks good to me. You don't have to go crazy with it. Oh, just trying to get it where it needs to be. I'm gonna go ahead and check that. You can see I'm out a little there. And we're gonna fix it again at the top, but might as well get it as close as we can down here. Okay, so there is the bottom of our door jam. And just as one final little check here, I'm gonna slide the door in just to make sure we're going the right direction. Good. Got just a little bit of gap on each side, just like we wanted. So we're ready to move on to the top piece. All right, we're ready to uh, stick the top board on and the top style, as they call it. And I told you before, I'm going to use a little bit of glue on this. So just to give it that little extra added stick -em. And my glue is stuck shut. Okay, there we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, I think I'm gonna grab a couple of paper bags right quick or a little piece of some trash that I can, there we go, that'll work. That way if my glue drips down, it doesn't get on my shop floor. Or I should say when my glue drips down. Okay, so. We're just gonna test fit our piece here. Feels real good. Let's check a measurement. See how we did. We're looking for 24 and a quarter plus one little RCH, perfect. All right. Now, I'm trying to decide if I should pre-drill these holes first. And also trying to decide if I should go down through the top or through the sides here thinking I'm going to go through the side, but I'm going to get some of this meatier part. I don't want to go in there. I want to get in this meatier part. 
uh, and later on I may come back in and put one or two screws kind of down at an angle like that into there. We'll see. May not need it, actually. I tend to do stuff overkill sometimes and actually all the time, I'll admit it. I do overkill stuff all the time and it's just my thing kind of. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a little glue up in here. I can hear some of the safety sallies out there. Oh God, he's touching glue with his finger. He's gonna die. But trust me, I've done it plenty of times and I ain't dead yet. So I'm gonna keep on doing it. I am gonna go through the sides like I talked about. Don't forget to close your glue or that'll really piss you off. Okay. So since I know this board is straight, I'm just gonna come up to it. Hopefully you guys can see and I'm not, my big head's not blocking the way here. I'm gonna come in like right there. And there. Okay, my glue squished out, like to see that. Okay, that's one side completed. Okay, I'm gonna wipe that glue off here in a second. So I'm pushing this all the way down and just holding it in as tight as I can hold it with my finger there. Shooting a couple of screws in through the side. And I know before you say anything, I already know that end grain is not the best way to screw in to a board but that's why I put the glue on there. Okay, there we go. And now I'm gonna wipe up the glue here. And I'm afraid we're getting so long in this video, we're gonna to have to make this a two-part series. Uh, so that's gonna conclude this part of the video where basically I've made the rough, the rough frame part of the door, so, or for the pre-hung door. And next up, those strips of wood back there, we're gonna get those installed and we're gonna cut out the, uh, the hinges. We're gonna to have to take a chisel. I actually do have a router, but I wanted to do it old school. So I'm gonna take a chisel and we're gonna uh, you know, clearance those hinges so that we can set them in here uh, in the proper places and all that. But right now we've got the basic structure of the frame built. Uh, the glue needs to dry. I am gonna go ahead and try to square it up the best I can. But other than that, hopefully this helps you guys out. That was fairly easy to put together. But to me, I would rather do it this way. I would rather have a pre-hung door to set in an opening than try to put a frame in an opening and then try to make a door match that frame. So. Anyways, guys, appreciate you stopping by, and hopefully this helps you out. Uh, please hit the thumbs up if you like it. Uh, subscribe, check out the other videos, and until next time, uh, oh yeah, by the way, be sure to check out part two. It'll be coming up shortly. All right, we'll see you later.